Researchers have long made a connection between the onset and the continuance of chronic depression and loneliness or a feeling of isolation. The matter of loneliness can be both a cause and a consequence of social isolation. And isolation, whatever its cause, can be a contributor to serious depression. In the spring of 2019, journalist Kay Haimovich of the Manhattan Institute, writing in the City Journal, stated, Americans are suffering from a bad case of loneliness. A study released by the insurance company Cigna last spring made headlines with its announcement, only around half of Americans say they have meaningful daily face-to-face -face social interactions. Loneliness, public health experts tell us, is killing as many people as obesity and smoking. When life seems overwhelming, one possible reaction is to turn inward, retreating from direct contact with people as much as possible. Re-establishing contact with others seems to be a near insurmountable task. A strong social network, or even maintaining a few close friends or relations, can be a literal lifeline in a time of seeming despair. Human beings really need direct face-to-face -face social interaction at some level. Isolation makes one more vulnerable to the stresses that can lead to depression. In May 2019, Amy Novotny, writing for the American Psychological Association, notes, According to a meta-analysis co-authored by Julian Holt Lindstedt, PhD, a professor of psychology and neuroscience at Brigham Young University, lack of social connection heightens health risks as much as smoking 15 cigarettes a day or having alcohol use disorder. The structure of society is changing, and with that change, an epidemic of isolation will ensue. The same article states, the most recent U.S. Census data, for example, show that more than a quarter of the population lives alone, the highest rate ever recorded. In addition, more than half of the population is unmarried, and marriage rates and the number of children per household have declined since the previous census. How has this situation come to be? For centuries, populations in nations that are generally described as being of British or European cultural backgrounds had a tradition of strong family and societal connections. Foundering social trust, collapsing heartland communities, an opioid epidemic, and rising numbers of deaths of despair suggest a profound collective discontent. It's worth mapping out one major cause that is simultaneously so obvious and yet so uncomfortable that loneliness observers tend to mention it only in passing. I'm talking, of course, about family breakdown. Now we should take account of how deeply the changes in family life of the past 50 odd years are intertwined with the flagging well-being of so many adults and communities. Haimovich goes on to describe how the kinship that formal family relations produces insulates the individual from the risk of the perception of profound loneliness and the despair and depression that can be a consequence. She writes, Kinship has been the most powerful glue of human groups since Homo sapiens first discovered the mother-in-law. She goes on to observe that the relationships developed in a formal contractual marriage produces strong family bonds, and even to some degree, a sense of responsibility toward members of the immediate and even extended family. She notes that research implies that couples cohabitating outside of a marriage agreement, even those with children, do not see the same level of family connection or development of extended family relations. Marriage creates kin, cohabitation does not. If this is the case, then we are headed toward a kinless society, one in which loneliness and depression will be nearly ubiquitous. Nussbaum Law published Canadian data on a page entitled Marriage Statistics in Canada. According to their data for 2021, 
Marriage rates for couples aged 25 to 29 was 20.9 percent. Rates for non-married or common law couples for the same age group was 56 percent. The above is a formula for enhancing the potential for social isolation, even of youth, as kinship networks are far less likely to be developed in cases of either divorce or in situation where there is no formal marriage. This is a statistical reality. Thus, today's society is structured to generate greater levels of isolation and depression than anything we have seen in the past. The breakdown of the traditional family and the traditional roles of mother and father has created a sociological rift in the fabric of natural kin relationships, which provided so much support for individuals in times of stress. Novotny discusses an additional area which to a great extent provided a social connection for people. That is the area of volunteerism. She explains how rates of volunteerism are declining, as well as the sharp increase in people not having any religious affiliation. Volunteerism is sometimes used as a measure of the degree of social involvement in society. A decline is an indicator of a society withdrawing into self-interest which is nearly always correlated with higher levels of depression and anxiety. The previous involvement of large percentages of the population in religious affiliations served to provide most people with some level of social support in terms of activities, regular assemblies, and even motivation to develop a concern about needs beyond one's own. This included providing a pool from which a spouse might be found from people of similar interests and commitment to a lifelong relationship, largely expected by the code of the religious affiliation. It served to promote stability as well as the expansion of kinship networks. The stark decline in religious association within populations of the Western world, in particular, has contributed to a loss of social ties and the rise in people living alone apart from those who might share common interests and truly care about their well-being. This creates a near-perfect environment for the epidemic of depression and loneliness in Western society today. Thus many, lacking or fearing direct personal contact or being reticent to share feelings directly with another person, seek contact on social media platforms. This, however, is not the same as human-to-human -human connection. Already, so many of the aged people among our populations are left alone, often unvisited, without kin to whom they can turn. This amounts to a tragedy. One of the ways we can combat loneliness and despair is to find another person to help or visit. Taking time to find someone to cheer up or assist in some way, however small, is a gift to them and a mental boost to the giver. People need people to function normally and to be encouraged. This is not new knowledge. About 3,000 years ago, an ancient philosopher king uttered these very modern sounding words. Anxiety in the heart of man causes depression, but a good word makes it glad. For that good word to be most effective, it needs to come from a person in physical proximity to you. A friend can encourage and help you overcome anxiety. We humans need that social support which we can get only from other humans. To fight depression, avoid becoming isolated from human contact. Get outside of your house or apartment. Walk to a store, stop in a coffee shop, smile at people and strike up an occasional conversation. We all very much need human contact and interaction even if it's just with the cashier asking what you would like in your coffee. We are in the midst of a culture war, one that is gradually isolating people and leaving vast numbers of people without a sense of kinship or even close friendship, especially as they age. Going for a walk in a park or in the neighborhood places you amongst people. As you watch the birds or squirrels, you're interacting with the real world, not the two-dimensional world of television or computers. 
Try reconnecting with old friends of good repute and relatives one may not have contacted for a while. One may be pleasantly surprised at how rebuilding kinships and friendships can rekindle hope and bring a smile to others. Do not surrender to loneliness or isolation. Neither is your friend. If you like this video, please like, comment and subscribe. And for more content like this, please visit our website at tomorrowsworldviewpoint.org.